everybody. We're on our way for three streams this week. We're going to uh, have one tomorrow as well. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, it's a little, I'll give you a little bit of insight. Um, it's, the reason this stream had to be at 545 is that I only get three YouTube notifications in 20, every 24 hours. So I had to wait until after 5.30ish was when I, I posted my X-Men breakdown yesterday. So this is why there's like a domino effect when I'm covering stuff, you know, because I post, you know, I'm not only doing live streams, but I'm doing other videos as well. So it's really hard. And, you know, if I stumble and my X-Men breakdown goes up later than I would like it to, you can see it has an effect into the next day. Uh, I really wish that they would allow, um, you know, more notifications if people opted in for them. Uh, but you know, I'm working with, I'm working with the system the way that it is, but I'm really glad we were able to do a stream today and there will be a stream tomorrow as well. Tomorrow's stream will definitely be at 12 noon because I have to leave at one. <laughs> I got to be done at one, uh, one ish, but I have to finish the stream at one. Uh, so by the way, thank you, Paul, for gifting those memberships. And I saw that, uh, just blaze Disney just joined. I love it. I love it. Thank you everybody for your continued generosity. I'm so glad you guys like my shirt. This is like kind of a see-through shirt. Like I can't go any really lower. <laughs> I have, I, I mean, you, you can't really see anything, but it's a little more see-through through than one would like. Uh, just, I'm just telling you if you ever want to purchase the shirts. Uh, but, um, they're from a company called, hold on. I actually have a lot of shirts from here. Almost all of my shirts come from Johnny was an AFRM. This is the company AFRM. Uh, oh, thank you, Danny. Thank you. Writer boy. Uh, I really love mesh tops. I love sports tops and mesh tops I'm, and swim shirts. I think they have fun patterns and they're flattering, you know, uh, and they got the thumb holes a lot of the time. There was one AFRM shirt that was checkerboard that I decided not to get. And then I saw it in Bloomingdale's when I was walking through the store and I was like, I should have bought that shirt. And it was sold out everywhere. I was so sad. Hey, Drago. So thank you everybody for joining me. We have great stories to discuss today. Uh, as always, try to keep your comments and questions uh, on the story at hand. And then at the end of each section, I'll open that section up for questions and comments. But then at the very end of the stream, as always, there's uh, a 10 minute Q and A where you can ask me anything that you would like. Thank you, Steven. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, hey, Danny, uh, Danny. It's so nice uh, to see everybody. All right. You ready? You ready? Uh, I think it's a little too bright. I'm not, it's hard to do the lighting, especially when it's an overcast day in uh, the city. I saw Mika again yesterday. I was like, Mika, is that you? Am I seeing you again? It was so fun. I saw him at Abigail. Uh, all right, let's get, let's get going. All right. Yeah, it, it is, it is a see-through. It's, uh, it's, it's supposed to have, it has a rose, as you can see. There's the rose. Uh, I do like this shirt. All right. You want a Sinatra boop, Elliot? Hold on. Let me, let me do it. It's kind of more, more like a Bing Crosby one, but hold on. Let me try and see it like this. Boobly boobly boop. <laughs> Let's talk about Scorsese. All right, so Scorsese, what is Scorsese up to? Yesterday, Variety had a huge article about him, and they dropped a number of projects that he's working on, but the one that everybody paid attention to is the Sinatra project. But first, let me highlight the other projects that they talked about that he was working on. I'll just say it now. Scorsese couldn't be busier at 81, yet Tarantino is trying to decide what his last movie will be at 61. Uh, it's very interesting. I like having those two stories back to back. All right. So Variety highlighted that he's considering making a movie about another movie about Jesus. Of course, he did the last temptation of, uh, the last temptation of Christ a while ago. Uh, but this would be a Jesus movie that would feature potentially Andrew Garfield, who he worked with on, uh, silence. Uh, and then also Miles Teller. It was a hilarious article. They were like, please note that my, the Andrew Garfield might be too old to play Jesus. <laughs> Andrew Garfield's like, I just can't get a break, catch a break, man. They're like literally in this variety article, they were like, 
Jesus died in his mid-30s, and Andrew Garfield just turned 40, so I don't really know if he could play that role. And you're like, I think he could play Jesus. I actually think he'd be a great Jesus, Andrew Garfield. Uh, but they were like, maybe he's going to be a disciple. And Jesus will be like, damn, you're old. <laughs> he's like, okay, boomer, whenever they're talking at the, at the last dinner. Uh, hey, Gareth. Ah, uh, Gareth, you were so generous earlier this week. That's so kind of you. Thank you. So yeah, so we'll see if they do a, a, a Jesus movie. Uh, and then also, I thought this was an excellent idea. He's talking about doing a, a TV show of Cape Fear for Apple TV. Uh, you know, of course, Scorsese says he directed the Cape Fear remake in 1991, but with Steven Spielberg. I was like, who's not going to give that a whirl? Who's not going to watch that? I mean, I didn't really like it. Scorsese's Cape Fear remake, of course, the original was 1962 with Robert Mitchum and Gregory Peck. I love Robert Mitchum. Little known fact about me, Robert Mitchum is very similar. My grandfather, or, or one of them, is like pretty much a, a mix of Robert Mitchum, Marlon Brando, and Edward G. Robinson. So whenever I see Robert Mitchum, I'm like, ah, oh, it's like my grandpa. All right, so anyway, so yes, uh, a Cape Fear Apple TV show. I think everybody would at least try the first episode. And I think by having it be a series, you can really dive into like why he's terrorizing this family on their boat. My grandpa was very cool, little baby pizza. My grandfather was a professional. Well, I don't think he was a professional, but he was like, he gambled a lot. He was like a really good gambler. He was very good at it. And he had actually gone to Hollywood to maybe try and be an actor. It's a sad story. I don't want to talk about it. He had a rough time. But he was a very good gambler. He was a cool guy. I think the first time I ever saw a picture of him, I actually said to my mom, I said, I didn't know your dad was a bad guy because I'd seen so many movies. <laughs> but he was a great guy. He was a really wonderful person. Uh, hey, Paul. All right, so then the big reveal was that there, he wants to do a movie about Frank Sinatra. And apparently he's been working on this for a long time, but Tina Sinatra is being difficult. All right, so Sinatra. This would be yet another DiCaprio and Scorsese movie. How many movies have they made together? So many that there is a Wikipedia page dedicated to it. Here's a list. Here's a list of the movies they've made together. Some of them, you know, I got to tell you, they're not all great. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Uh, I, don't, I don't like Gangs of New York. I don't like The Aviator. I love The Departed. One of the best movies ever. Just recently we watched it. Don't like Shutter Island. I got to tell you, though, I wouldn't kick any of these movies out of bed, right? I mean, they're all okay. The Wolf of Wall Street, that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know what the audition even is. I should have looked at this list before I screen grabbed it. And then, of course, Killers of the Flower Moon, which, as you know, I did not care for. Uh, so, you know, they have a pretty good uh, pretty good resume together. And on, on obviously, you know, Scorsese has been a huge part of Leonardo DiCaprio building up his career. Now, the other good thing about doing a Frank Sinatra movie, all right, is that it has a gangster element to it, and Scorsese really shines with gangsters. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, one of the reasons that Frank Sinatra has a career in Hollywood is because he got a little bit of help. Oh, the audition is a short film. Thank you, Popcorn Roulette. But Frank Sinatra had a lot of connection to gangsters. In fact, if you, when you watch the original Godfather, and that guy's asking uh, the Godfather to help him get a role in a movie, and it leads to that infamous horsehead scene, or famous, because it's an amazing scene, that's rumored to be based on Sinatra. Uh, and so there will be a gangster element to this movie. So that's perfect for uh, Scorsese. As for DiCaprio as Sinatra, I got to tell you, I think he's got that same sparkle. I think he'd actually be a pretty good Sinatra. He doesn't really look very much like him, but maybe they can do a Bradley Cooper makeup job. But they could be like, we don't want to do the full Bradley Cooper because he went too far. But if we could do somewhere in the middle where we basically at least make Leonardo DiCaprio, I think he's got the blue eyes. You know, Frank Sinatra's nickname is Old Blue Eyes. And DiCaprio definitely has that. I think he's definitely got the swagger. But as Rob says, he does look absolutely nothing like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> he really doesn't. He looks nothing like him. Oh, thank you, El Pidio. But uh, I think it could be done. I think it could be fixed. The only question that I have is, can DiCaprio sing? I, have no, I don't believe I've ever heard Leonardo DiCaprio sing. So we'll see. Now, the other part of this story was that Jennifer Lawrence 
uh, has, is also in the mix to play Ava Gardner, who was one of uh, Frank Sinatra's wives. Uh, now, Jennifer Lawrence, of course, already teamed up with Leonardo DiCaprio and Don't Look Up for Netflix, which I think was actually a great movie. Uh, but she looks absolutely nothing like Ava Gardner. That's Ava Gardner there on the left. She looks nothing like Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, I think Eva Green would be a better uh, choice for the role. I mean, Ava Gardner was quite the dame, as they would maybe would say back then. And I think that obviously Jennifer Lawrence could portray that part of the, of the actress. But it looks absolutely... That, neither one of these people look anything like the, 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 these two, like the actual real-life people. So that's the only problem. You're like, you look absolutely nothing like these two people. Uh, Tina Sinatra. That, of course, is uh, Sinatra's legitimate child. Uh, I do agree with everybody what they say about Ronan Farrow, particularly some of the recent photos that have gone up on him. Uh, but Tina Sinatra has to approve this, and apparently she's been against it for some reason. I think she doesn't like that. The rumor is Variety. Variety was very gossipy. Variety was like, look, Ava Gardner was the person that Frank Sinatra left Tina Sinatra's mother for. So she doesn't want to make a move. I'm like, who, who knows? I mean, I think Tina Sinatra probably likes cash and her father's legacy. So I think she'd probably maybe agree to it. I mean, come on. Don't, don't be a wet blanket, right? The reason I like, let me ask, like you guys want a poll? I know you guys like the poll. Let's do a poll. Do you think... DiCaprio would make a good Sinatra. Uh, yes, as is. Yes, with makeup. And then, nope. It's only, only three options. All right, by the way, anyone can vote in a poll. Only members can chat, but anybody can vote in a poll, just so you know. Uh, so then the other thing is, one other thing I wanted to point out is that I really love the focus on classic Hollywood. Classic Hollywood to me is getting very much lost in the shuffle. Turn to classic movies, everybody's scared about what's going to happen with them. Uh, Zazie's like, oh, I'm going to kill it. And then actually, interestingly enough, Scorsese and Spielberg helped to save it. And they're supposed to be advisors on, um, on TCM, but I don't really, I don't think we've seen anything come out of that. Uh, but anyway, I've been a little frustrated that when you look at the classics genre, like for instance, I believe like on app on iTunes on Apple Movies, yeah, that's right, Cosmic says he's poking it with a stick. And he's like, mm, I don't think this is alive enough to save. But um, I was really shocked that Apple has mixed like '80s movies into the classic section. They're like Ferris Bueller, a classic film, and I'm like, mm, I think we might need two categories of classics if this is what we're gonna do. Because it's ridiculous to start to put 80s movies in the classics section. Because just nobody's gonna watch the, the real classics anymore. Because they're just gonna get sidetracked with the, like, the 80s and 90s movies, which I think is ridiculous. But you know, for instance, I saw some of you already mention it. Uh, they're making the Fred Astaire movie. Amy Pascal is producing that with her. One, you know, she's getting a lot out of her Spider-Man team. Uh, Tom Holland uh, will star. Uh, and of course, he's 100% a dancer. Uh, you know, we don't know if DiCaprio can sing, but we sure know that Tom Holland can dance. So I think that's a fantastic project. I, I hope it doesn't take forever to get made. Uh, but I like this. I like spotlighting Frank Sinatra. I like spotlighting Fred Astaire. Anything to get people more aware of these actors and this talent and check out their projects. All right, so let me close this poll, and then you can ask me any questions you have on this story before we move on to the next one. Hold on. All right, so... All right, 46% of you don't want this. Wow, that's pretty bad. Maybe Scorsese says he should. Maybe Tina's right. 38% uh, of you think so, uh, you would be interested in, with some, the appropriate makeup, and only 14% of you feel he could play the role as is. Eww, yikes. All right, so does anybody have any questions or comments um, about this story? You know, Dre, Dre film, Sammy Davis Jr. led quite the life. That would be, you know, fascinating. You know, Danny, uh, I don't think they had any makeup for him as Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover. I thought he did actually did a pretty good job with that movie. I recently watched it for the first time maybe about a year or so ago. Uh, you know, Clint Eastwood's kind of reserved as a filmmaker, but it was solid. But I, I don't really know if he had, I mean, maybe a little makeup. 
Oh, Jander says that DiCaprio admitted that he can't sing. I can't sing either. Um, I'm good on him for admitting it. I don't really know if anybody wants to watch a lip-synced Frank Sinatra movie. That's right, Jack. Amy Pascal. I'm so proud of her. She just keeps going. She puts her wig on and gets out there. Marco, did they lip sync for Bohemian Rhapsody? I, I didn't mind that. Greg points out that he sang in Titanic <laughs> and was supposed to be charming. Ah, uh, thanks, Riley. Okay, I think you guys, uh, Evan says maybe it won't be about the music and more about the personal side with the gangsters. That would be good. You know, and maybe they'll just have Frank Sinatra songs. He's got to, he's got to have a drink in his hand and sing a little bit though. You know, he and, um, Dean Martin, you know, Dean Martin from, uh, cl those claymation of uh, celebrity battles. And he's like, Ooh, I spilled my drinky poo. Still the f funniest one they ever did of those. But yeah, you know, you got to do the Dean Martin, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra kind of situation for sure. It's just too fun. J.A. says, bring in Michael Buble to do the singing. He actually kind of looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. Hey, dual non. John Thrasher says, we might do a gangster movie with a soundtrack from all the, the contemporary artists. Well, you mean at that time? That would be interesting. I mean, I'm interested in this movie, but I'm, a lot of you seem not to be interested. So if I were a studio executive, I'd be rethinking investing in this. All right, let's, uh, news writer, I'm not sure who would play Dean. I'm not even, Dean is just my suggestion. Uh, suggestion. I'm not even sure 100% Dean's in the movie. Uh, but, you know, Dean Martin's a pretty silly, funny guy. They did, there was a Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra Christmas special that I've watched a few times. My family has it, I think, on DVD, and it's really funny. It's, and it's co quite cozy. Yeah, Frank Sinatra's a very interesting uh, character. J. Jonah Jameson likes him. <laughs> I can't tell if you're doing a bit, J. Jonah Jameson, but I love that you're staying in character. And Movies TV Review says, would you keep Jennifer Lawrence? I actually wouldn't because I just think she looks, they can't both look so little like the characters that they're playing. But I mean, as a viewer, I'm okay with it. All right. Uh, Pretty and thanks for bringing up Casino. I think Casino is actually a really solid Scorsese movie. I don't think it's one of his best. I'm glad you like it so much, but it's certainly, I think, better than it gets credit for. Uh, all right. You ready to go forward, Danny? All right, let's boop it up. All right, hold on. You can't have it be black and white, Ben. You got to show old blue eyes. He's, you got to show the blue eyes. All right. Story number two. Boop. All right. So we're talking about Tarantino's 10th and final film. He says this is it. That's right, Sensation. He loves the feet. Quentin Tarantino says he's only making 10 movies. So somebody posted a photo online of his 10 films. And uh, many people, including myself, were like, wait a minute, that's 10 movies. <laughs> but apparently he's counting the two Kill Bills as one. So, all right. So he wants, for some reason, he's like, he's got to make, he's like, he's only making 10. So he's like taking really seriously what's going to be the 10th film. And it was supposed to be this film called The Movie Critic, which was supposed to star, once again, Brad Pitt. So I got out of my Abigail screening last night, said hi to Mika. Then when I was walking out, I checked my Twitter account, and I, they were like, Quentin Tarantino is trending. And I was like, what happened? And they said, he stopped doing the movie critic. He decided not to do it at the last minute. And I was like, I mean, I thought it was a pretty big deal. I remember talking to some, uh, I was there with some pre other members of the press, and I was like, guess what? And they were all like, oh my gosh, that's a huge headline. So yeah, he just said, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. You know, it's interesting, film fanatic, you say a female lead. I believe this movie at first was supposed to have a female lead. It was crazy. I don't know if it was just rumors. At first, it was supposed to be a story kind of like based on a Pauline. I forget her last name. It starts with a K. She was the film critic for the New York Times. Very famous critic. And, you know, a little bit like the critic that, that, was, that was spotlighted in uh, Birdman, you know, the Michael Keaton movie. So it was first, it was that. Oh, Pauline Kale. Thank you, everybody. So at first, everybody was like, oh, he's going to have a female lead. That's going to be great. But then it became a male critic who used to write for a porn magazine that uh, Tarantino like, used to read and thought was really cool. And so he's like, oh, he's going to make that. And Brad Pitt was going to play the character. So you're like, all right, you know, everybody likes Tarantino. Let's see what he does. 
Now, I was looking at the response last night, and somebody said that Brad Pitt, in fact, had actually dropped out of this about a week ago. I don't know if that's true or not, but maybe that contributed to Tarantino deciding not to make the movie. You know what I think? Here's my guess. I would say that it would be a stupid idea for a, cel a celebrated filmmaker like Tarantino to make a movie about critics. Because who's going to shape his legacy? Movie critics. So I'd be like, why do you got to comment on that, man? Just leave him alone. Don't get into a fight with movie critics. I think it's a dumb idea. Uh, for instance, I think Alex Garland, you know, I think and you can see the tide starting to turn on Civil War a little bit. Although a lot of people are fighting against that. It's crazy. But I think a lot of people will, uh, you know, a lot of people, I would say that Alex Garland, you know, making such horrible comments about the press was maybe not the way to go with making Civil War. So I would say to Tarantino, why on earth would you, uh, you know, would you do that? Why, why would you cause, a, cause an issue with your final film? So that's to me why he, why I would guess that he decided at the last minute, you know what, maybe I shouldn't. So now, just because he's, now, for some reason, why does he want to just make 10 movies? Now, I want to point out that just because he stops making movies doesn't mean he's necessarily done in Hollywood. He still owns a movie theater, which he programs, and he's often appearing at. And then, of course, he could make streaming shows. There's lots of other places he could work. He could do theater. There's all kinds of stuff to, uh, Tarantino could do. But he says he only wants to make 10 movies. I'd also like to point out that Steven uh, Soderbergh has been threatening or is promising to retire for, like a, for, for years now, and yet he still makes one more movie. So it's crazy. Uh, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily take it to heart. And also, I don't know why he wants to do 10 movies, because he can always do a box set, right? Uh, thanks, Jack. That's funny. Uh, you know, he could always make a box, you know, maybe he feels like 10 movies would be a box set. I gotta say, if I were Tarantino, I'd make more than 10 movies, because I gotta say, this group of movies right here is medium. Uh, I think he's got some clunkers in here, you know? And like, why does, um... What's that one there? Hold on, let me make it bigger so I can read it. Death Proof. That shouldn't count. I'd be like, dude, you're only at eight, right? I mean, out of these movies, uh, I think, you know, obviously, obviously, you know, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction are iconic. I think I only like the first Kill Bill. I think Jackie Brown's nice. Um, and Glorious Bastards, I think, is a phenomenal film. Uh, Django Unchained, solid. Uh, Hateful Eight. I liked Hateful Eight, but if I only knew he was making 10 movies, I would have told him not to make that one either. You know, like Hateful Eight is like a good movie, but I wouldn't say I would think it should be, if he was only making 10, I should be like, these should all be like opuses, man. Uh, so we'll see. And you know, even though I have serious problems with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, as many of you know, I really hated the way they handled Sharon Tate. And I thought that the Bruce Lee disrespect was nuts. I still like the movie. You know, I still think it's a good film. And I got to tell you, I love a good three and a half, three, three hour plus movie. A really well made three hour plus movie that looks good and has big stars in it. Uh, man, I just love to marinate in that, you know. And it's funny because Scorsese makes the same type of movie. Uh, so th that's like phenomenal. So, I mean, maybe he could make Kill Bill 3. The only problem with that, though, is that Uma Thurman hates his guts because he forever um, injured her uh, on, Kill, on Kill Bill, in fact. So I, I don't really know if he'd ever be able to make Kill Bill 3, but we'll see what he might decide to do. So, but anyway, it's interesting, you know, you know, maybe he should go do Star Trek. I would love to see Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek. Can it maybe not be part of his 10 movies since it's a franchise film? I mean, I'd be really interested in that. I don't care, Bear says she posted about him on Instagram. Let's see. Let's, was, uh, let's see. I didn't even know Uma Thurman was on Instagram. Good for her. Let's see. Uma Thurman. Oh, yeah, she did. She said, happy birthday, Pulp Fiction. Well, is that about him or more about her? But still, I'd, if I were Quentin Tarantino, I'd say, hmm, maybe, 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 maybe this could work. All right, does, he's not going to do Secret Wars, Ivan. 
Uh, all right, so does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we move on to the, to the third story of the day? Elpidio, Uma Thurman's not doing a lot. My Hawk's career is really taking off, though, her daughter. Jerry says, what's your favorite Quentin Tarantino film? That's a great question. I guess I'd have to go with Inglorious Bastards. But I really like um, the first Kill Bill. I respect Pulp Fiction. Um, and I kind of like uh, Once Upon... But I, can't, I have some such big issues with some of the things in Once Upon a Time that can't be my favorite. CM, I've seen a lot of people saying Zendaya could be in Kill Bill 3. She would be great in that. I would love that for her. Uh, uh, Holly, you're, 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 I'm on to you, Holly, Holly. Let's see here. Danny, I wouldn't want to see Uma Thurman replaced by her daughter. I don't, I don't, wouldn't, I think that'd be uncool. I mean, I wouldn't be against Maya Hawk maybe doing one flashback sequence, but get Uma back in there. Cause I, you know, as much as I like Anya Taylor-Joy, I feel bad that Charlize Theron has been replaced as Furiosa. David, you've really only seen the Kill Bill movies of this list? Get, get a watch in there. There's some great stuff on here. I mean, you at least have to, you got to watch, you know, most of these. The only one I would say you should not watch maybe um, is Death Proof. Everything else is worth your time. Jamber, I think people will be interested in Uma Thurman in this, in a Kill Bill film. But yeah, definitely interest in Uma Thurman has gone down a lot, unfortunately. Lisa says, skip Hateful Eight. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe I liked it. But I mean, it's not like must watch Tarantino. I would agree with that. Malcolm wants a top three out of the list. All right, I'll do it. Inglorious Bastards is number one. Pulp Fiction is number two. And Kill Bill is number three. For me. I, but I can only have four things in a poll. Just write your, write your favorite Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino movie in the comments because I can only do four options in the poll, so that wouldn't work. Let me just see. I'm waiting. Okay, we got Kill Bill, Pulp Fiction. As you can see, it's all over the place. See? That's why I can't just pick four because you can see uh, a lot of different choices. That's awesome. By the way, that's right. Django Unchained had Leonardo DiCaprio with some of the best. Boy, I got to tell you, DiCaprio teams up with Scorsese a lot, but he and Tarantino make the best memes. Oh, look, Teresa likes Hateful Eight. See? A lot of good movies. Giancarlo says, I vote for Kill Bill 3 with Zendaya versus Uma. I think a lot of people would watch that movie, Giancarlo. Let's see if he does it. That would be great. All right, let's go to the third story of the day. All right, and then we'll get to the Ask Me Anything portion of the stream. Hold on. All right. Boom, baby. It was approved today. Disney, uh, actually, I think early this morning or yesterday, Disneyland's expansion has been approved. All right, so as we discussed recently, during the Disney shareholder meeting, one of the questions that was asked was, what is Disney going to do to combat Epic Universe, which is opening in Florida, I think next year, uh, 2025. Uh, a huge park, which is going to greatly expand Universal's presence in Orlando, making them a destination. Right now, you can really only spend two to three days at Universal, and they want to make it that you can spend like your four to five day vacation there and never even have to hit up Disney. 
Uh, USA attendance at the Disney parks has been down or stagnant recently, uh, where, while it's been going up overseas. And uh, Epic Universe, it's being said, would really create a surge in attendance for Universal and could really, you know, at least for a little bit, be a little bit embarrassing for Disney in the region. Now, as we also have been discussing, politics is what has been, what's been slowing down the, uni, the U.S. parks. Uh, you know, they're fighting with Ron DeSantis in Florida, and they needed the Anaheim City to approve their expansion in California. So they've been building very much so overseas. And a lot of Disney fans in the United States have been frustrated, saying, why are you building all this cool stuff overseas? When are we going to get new stuff? Well, the day is coming. Not only did they finally make up with the Ron DeSantis board, not Ron DeSantis himself, but Disney's finally made, made nice with the, with the new oversight board in Florida, so expect some big announcements to come out of that. I'm so jealous you're going to Tokyo Disney, K. Walton. I really would love to go to Disney, uh, Fantasy Springs. It's opening there. Uh, and then now they have this vote in Anaheim, and it's been approved. Uh, oh, by the way, Marcello, for, for those of you who don't know what Epic Universe is, Epic Universe is uh, like a new four to five park land, which is going to be like the size of both um, uh, Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. So it's the size of the two current parks. And it's going to be a little bit down the road from Universal as is right now. So it's a huge, huge expansion. It will more than double the size of Universal Orlando. So it was approved, a $2 billion, a little bit less than $2 billion expansion, although not all of that is going to be spent on actual attractions and restaurants. A large amount of the money has to go to redoing roads, to move the roads uh, so that they can have this expansion and you know, help um, uh, traffic. They also have to add affordable housing. That's part of the deal uh, you know, as an offset. Uh, infrastructure, they have to fix a lot of the infrastructure because uh, they're going to be taxing it, you know, with their, uh, with the, uh, you know, like the sewer system apparently and stuff. And then also they're going to be building some city parks for Anaheim to kind of also offset it. They're, you know, they're trying to be like the carrot. They're like, ah, oh, this will create a lot more traffic to the city, but it'll create, look at all these beautiful things we're going to give you. And then also hopefully, you know, new jobs, even though of course I think pay is still a little bit of an issue with uh, Disney. Uh, so that's stuff that they're talking about. But what's really interesting is that they're saying that they're not going to uh, expand their footprint in Anaheim. It's going to be the same size. Here's a map. But what they've really asked is to be rezoned. They want to rezone a lot of the land that they... This is for Disneyland. Disney World's expansion has not been approved yet or even, in fact, pitched. And as far as Orlando goes... They've only made nice with the oversight board. That's the, that's the first step. But we're talking about Disneyland. So you're going to see expansion in Disneyland before you see it in Disney World. So they're actually asking to rezone the land that they currently have. One of the problems with Disneyland, of course, is that it once, as soon as it became a success, people bought up all the land around it. That was a big learning lesson for uh, Walt, and that's why when they bought the Orlando property, they bought so much property, and they didn't tell anybody. They bought it under a fake company's name, uh, actually, I think a couple of fake companies, so that they would have so much land that they could build on forever. Of course, they still need the approval of the government down in Orlando, but Disneyland is a different situation, whereas, like, there's, like, for instance, I've been, for in, like, I've been on the monorail at Disneyland, and if you don't sit on the right side, you see, like, McDonald's and all these other uh, st companies and, you know, stuff. It's weird. Uh, but, yeah, because, like, when they first built Disneyland, it was surrounded by beautiful orange groves, but, you know, Walt didn't own those orange groves, so they very much, uh, that land was sold to, to other people. And it would be very prohibitively expensive for Disney to try and buy it back today. They're not even going to try, as you can see here. So instead, they want to stay on their current land, and they're going to rezone it. So let's take a look at this mess. I don't know how they're going to pull this off. All right, so I'll be back. All right, so here it is. All right. Now, this is the existing parking. And you can see they have possible new parking. I bet they're going to move and then existing parking over there. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Let me see if I have my arrow. I do. All right. So there's the existing parking, existing parking, existing parking, existing parking. And then here, um, hold on. 
Here they're thinking of possible new parking, right? Is there any down here? No. All right, so possible new parking, all right? So to me, that says like they're going to build a lot of parking maybe in the areas that already exist, or new areas, and they're going to maybe, you know, you, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they use some of the parking structures for uh, the parks. But here's where it gets weird, all right? So back to our map. All right, so they're like, if you, at first I was like, what the heck am I looking at? So I'll explain it to you. So here's California Adventure. You can see how much smaller it is than Disneyland. And here's Disneyland, all right? Now here's the, the Grand California Hotel, parts of downtown Disney. This is the entrance where they have like the tram and stuff comes in. And then this is right now the hotels, okay? That's the Disneyland Hotel. And this is Disney's Paradise Pier, which has now been turned into the Pixar Resort. They're claiming that they're going to expand Disney's California Adventure into this area around the hotel. Basically, Disneyland Hotel and Pixar would be swallowed up by the parks. And maybe that makes sense because uh, Pixar Pier is a big part of Disney's California Adventure and then suddenly the hotel would be in the park. Then up here near the Disneyland Hotel, the Disneyland uh, theme park would expand right into its backyard, which is interesting as well. You know, at least the hotels fit the, the parks that's going to go right into their area. So let me close this up so you can see me again. So I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, that to me seems really crowded um, and building stuff on top of each other. And I don't know how it's going to make the hotels feel. I mean, they got to do what they got to do, I guess, right? I mean, they have to remain competitive. But obviously, it's going to be a lot easier in Orlando where they own so much open land. Now, what's going to go into these areas? Well, obviously, they're already bringing Avatar to Disneyland. Uh, but also, they're going to obviously, I think, look to the expansions that they've been doing overseas. Uh, the Frozen Lands that they've been building, the Zootopia Park, Fantasy Springs, which is opening in Tokyo, for those of you who are going, which, of course, features not only a Frozen section, but a Rapunzel area and a Peter Pan area, which I love. I'm so, I'm so into that. And for instance, they're uh, talking about expanding um, uh, Animal Kingdom and redoing Dinosaur Land as uh, South America. And they showed some footage of the working on that, and people, eagle-eyed Disney fans, spotted that Mystic Manor, which is a trackless attraction, uh, like in, I think, I think in Shanghai maybe, but it's their version of a, of, a, um, of a haunted mansion, but it's basically, they're going to be using Mystic Manor and reskinning it as Encanto, which is actually very clever. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's like what Disney has been recently doing about reskinning things, but here they're going to just be rebuilding it, but they're going to be building it with a different theming. Oh, is it in Hong Kong? Thank you. So I think if you're wondering what they're going to be building, it will be variations or the exact attractions that they've already been building overseas because all the work's been done on them. So they can do it faster. So, I mean, I'm not terribly against that. The, the, the Peter Pan stuff to me has sounded particularly cool. Uh, and so I'd, be, I'd like to, to see all that. Although I do feel bad. I wish they would build new attractions and I like coming up with new technology. I personally feel the trackless rides all kind of play the same. Uh, you know, Ratatouille, Rise of the Resistance, um, they all, and, and um, the new Mickey Mouse ride, Runaway Ra Railroad Road, all feel very much the same when you're on them. Especially like when I was there recently in August, I went on all those attractions, sometimes in very close proximity to each other, and I felt a lot like I'd just been on it. So we'll see how it works out, but I just, I would like new Disney stuff and they have, um, they want to try and alleviate some of the overcrowding. So we'll see how it works. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we go to the Q and A? That's right. Eighties model. They are also considering a villain's land. That's the rumor that when they build out the back of a uh, magic kingdom in Orlando, they might do a villain's land. I guess they'll see how popular because Universal's going to beat them to the punch with their monsters land. Universal monsters is going to do a land in Epic universe. And so, I mean, I guess they'll see how popular that is. I don't know how I feel about a whole villain's land, maybe a villain's ride or restaurant, 
But a whole land? I don't know how I feel about that. Adam's Fear says they need roller coasters. Thank you, 80s model, th for uh, gifting those memberships. Uh, yeah, they do need a few more roller coasters. Uh, you know, I think more thrill rides. They have the Snow White one, but that's, you know, like very truncated. That's right, Jerry. Boo Bash is extremely successful. It is my dream to someday attend Boo Bash. That's a, Halloween att that's a Halloween party only at Disney's California Adventure. It's far superior to Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. I have to say it. It's true. Um, I have a friend who went to Boo Bash uh, last Halloween, and it was as incredible as I expected it to be. I was so jealous. Jerry knows where it's at. That's right, Ben. Tron is also too short an attraction because I guess they don't have the space. These rides are short. Shorty, short, short. Bye, Danny. I don't know about Universal being more exciting, Ben. A lot of the things they unveiled for How to Train Your Dragon seemed very kitty, but maybe it's a kitty land. Ah, thank you, Bug. I like seeing your face there, too. Ah, Eddie's been to Boo Bash as well. Ah, I'm so jealous. I really want to be to Boo Bash. It's the best thing ever. Adam's Fear says, I go to Epcot for a day and then the rest of the time to Universal. What? I'm a Disney fan at heart. It's hard for me to leave it to go to Universal, but I just, I love Disney. Danny says, Universal's Horror Nights is also wildly successful. My friends and I go every year. The dark side has a market. I love it, Dan uh, Danny. I think it definitely does, but I don't know if it's a year-round market. Although, we'll see how Universal's... Uh, Las Vegas horror thing does, which will be year round. Okay, I will ask uh, if you guys would like a villain land. We'll do a poll, Dory. Good idea. This is a year round villains land in Orlando Magic Kingdom. I have to be very specific. A good idea for Disney. Because remember, it's not universal. Heck yeah. And then, need to see it. And then, it is not. Again, anybody can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. World of Devon says, why not something with soul? Well, that would have to be in the Pixar area. And they're doing a lot of Pixar stuff. Uh, Adam, I think it is technically Oogie Boogie Bash. That's true. I want to see Bruno too, Randall. I want to see Bruno too. I want to talk about Bruno. I want to do it. Ricky, that's funny. What about a hero's land? I guess that would have to eventually be the counterpart if it was successful. I think that's great. That's a great idea. Hercules would be there. Oh, Ramonzilla, you haven't gone to an amusement park in over a decade. Well, you know, they're not for everybody. I sure love them. I'm a big theme park fan. Leo wants Nightmare Before Christmas Land. Maybe that would be a part of that. Eddie says, Boo ba if you like Boo Bash, Grace, how could you not like Villain's Land? Well, if it had that kind of level of interaction, maybe I would like it. Oh, Rob, you liked Jollywood Nights? I saw a lot of bad reviews for it. It looks kind of cool to me. I love the holiday theming at uh, Hollywood Studios. Uh, no, Marco, the Grinch is universal, actually. Giancarlo, that's a great idea. Six months of the year, it's a hero land and six months it's villains. They could do heroes and villains in the same land and maybe that would make it work a little bit better in my opinion. All right, let me end the poll. Just a moment, I'll give you another moment to vote. No, I've never been to Knott's Berry Farm, Poke. I have been to a Six Flags though, not in a very long time, but I've been to Six Flags. All right, I'm closing the poll. Let's see what the poll votes are. All right, 61% of you think it's a good idea. 28% of you need to see it, but only 10% don't like the idea. All right, so that's pretty good. I'll be curious. I just hope it's big. I've been disappointed with the, so the smallness of Pandora and also uh, Galaxy's Edge for Star Wars. They don't feel like complete lands to me. Uh, so I would hope that, that would not be the case here. 
Like, will there be enough to do in it? I think even Avengers Campus has a similar issue where it just doesn't have enough to do in there. Oh, Dory, poison apple slushies. Ah, oh, you should work in the marketing department, Dory. Oh, Linda, you liked Jollywood Nights too. Oh, wasn't Tip Top Club at the Tower of Terror? That did look pretty cool. I'm glad to see the positivity for Jollywood Nights. LP says, what feels like a complete land? Well, I feel that's a good question. I feel a complete land should have at least three attractions, one like one e-ticket, which is like a thrill ride attraction. That's Disney lingo for like the most popular. Then I think you need a family all ages attraction and then probably a kitty attraction as well. Uh, so three rides. See, Aubrey agrees with me. Then you need not only a fast food uh, dining experience, you know, counter service, but you also need a restaurant, in my opinion, as Danny just said. So you need to at least have two food options, one counter service, one restaurant. Then I need some sort of theming, and kind of a theming area, and then also I need probably at least one shop that isn't at the exit of an attraction. Every attraction has an exit at its, uh, a shop at its exit. Oh, that's right, Jerry. Thank you. And a show. I think there should be some sort of show as well. So that's what I think you really need for a land to feel complete. Devin says, any idea when Disney gets the right back, rights back for Marvel in the Orlando parks? I think they got to buy those back. I think, you know, they got around it with the Guardians of the Galaxy. But, you know, it's going to, clearly for like the main Avenger characters, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a minute. All right. Griffin, I agree. The Captain Hook attraction or, no, they are some kind of like Lost Boys attraction or something in uh, Tokyo. It's very impressive. Aubrey, I like the stage shows, love. I have a friend or a relative actually who loves stage shows. I've never been that into stage shows. But my relative loves stage shows so much that now I'm into them. I'm like, yeah, stage shows. That's where it's at. Oh, Bagel, you like my shirt too? Thank you. It's um, AFRM. It's a mesh shirt. All right. I think we're good. Let's move to the Q&A. All right. Hold on. Wiki Nomad says, of Dracula-based restaurants, but all steaks are rare. That's pretty funny. You can't do that at a theme park, though, because I don't trust them to serve rare steak. <laughs> I think they poison everybody. Uh, but that's funny. All right, so, booyah! Q&A, 10 minutes. It's 6.37. You can ask me anything you'd like until 6.47. So MM92 is ready to go. It says, hi, Grace. For students learning to write film reviews, what would be your top three tips for how to write a quality film critique? Oh, that's a very interesting question. I think my first one would be that you really need to have your, develop your own voice, right? I think your, your reviews need to have personality because then why else, why would anybody tune into them? I also think that you need to be really honest in your opinion, right? Uh, I think that's also important for building a, a relationship with your audience. And then I would be, I try really hard not to be a hater, but then on the same side, not to be a lover. You don't want to be too negative or too positive about anything. Uh, although I really did hate civil war. Uh, but still, you know, occasionally that's going to happen. But for the most part, you want people to enjoy your work. So I hope that's helpful. Silver scale, silver scale says, I'm sad we couldn't watch Shogun together, Grace. It's so good. Well, it's funny you should say that, Silver Scale. Because the other night, I was out of stuff to watch. I'd watched all my screeners. I'd watched everything, including Hacks. Wesley, uh, who asked that? Where'd it go? Wesley Walrus. I watched all of Hacks season three. It's phenomenal. It's as good as the first season. I don't know if I'm going to do a review, but I'm certainly going to tweet about it because I thought it was incredible. So I loved Hacks season three. I watched my Hacks screeners. I watched uh, all of Fallout, all of Ripley. I didn't really feel like watching The Sympathizer. So I was like, what the heck am I going to watch? And I was like, ah, I guess I'll go back and watch some Shogun. Oh my God, I'm loving it. I'm zooming through that thing. I'd only watched one episode. I'm already through four. Uh, I'll be able to catch up to the 10, the f season finale or the series finale on Tuesday. I might do like a spoiler review for the whole show. I'll have to see what my schedule looks like. But I'm loving it. It's fantastic.
Elliot, you like your steak well done? That's crazy. I like medium rare. Sensation says, can you post on the community tab what day and what time we'll be having the next BTT Inside Access live stream? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to maybe do it today, but I will do it. I think like I think I have a note on Sunday to schedule BTT Inside Access. I do. So it'll probably go up on Sunday. Questionable Burrito. That's a great name. It says, hey, Grace, big fan of your coverage. Haven't been able to find anyone whose taste in movies align more with mine. Ah, uh, that means a lot. What are three movies to see, uh, you know, sometime in your life? Let's stick with the positive there, questionable burrito. Although if you're eating questionable burritos, I can see why you're, you're, you're pessimistic. <laughs> um, uh, Rear Window, obviously, is my, what I, my, I, my favorite film of all time. Uh, I think Citizen Kane, obviously, because it's like one of the most famous films, uh, con largely considered the best film still to this day ever made. And then... I'm not sure, you know, I guess I always say you should work your way through the AFI list, top 100 movies. You should have seen every movie on that list. Adam Byer says, we need an adult Disney park using Fox and other adult themed movies like Aliens or Predator. Oh, that's a great idea, Adam. Or an expansion on Hollywood Studios, which does not have enough attractions. I think that would be a great idea. I like that. World of Devon, I'm going to try and go back and see your chat. If you're too far back, oh, there it is. I'm still for a Wakanda Coogler. Oh, for a Wakanda land. Ryan Coogler should help. Yeah, I would love to see Wakanda brought to life. A lot of people would. Whoopi Goldberg said so. All right, let's see here. Dancing Dog 60 says, Grace, I've watched Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness over 100 times. What film have you watched a bunch of times? Ah, I'm glad you like that movie so much. I got to say, I rewatched it recently. I, you know, I thought it was funny, but I liked it more the first time I saw it. But it's a, it's a very funny movie. Um, I think Rear Window, obviously, is a film that I've watched many, many times. Uh, I've watched all of the Disney films, like animated movies, many, many times. Also live action ones like Pollyanna and The Parent Trap. Um, I've watched uh, Dr. Zhivago is like one of my favorites. You know, the ones you watch a ton of times are the ones that like really speak to you. Uh, I really love David Lean's Great Expectations. I've watched that a couple times. Uh, I like watching movies again. Of course, I've watched like the famous franchises many, many times, like Back to the Future, Alien, Jurassic Park, all those films. Uh, NoFX says, Grace, do you think Wolverine and Deadpool can still do a billion? I think it can. I just hope that everything isn't spoiled about the movie. That's what I'm worried about. All right, let's see. Holly Jervis, I feel bad you're wasting your money, but I, I told you, I know, I'm, I know what you're doing. Uh, all right. Leo, I'm glad we can still be friends, even though I didn't like poor things. Blair Wraith says, hey, sorry I missed the stream. Now that you're hooked on Fallout, have you looked into more of the lore? What's your, also, what's your favorite pizza place in town? Oh, uh, obviously, I like the Ray's Pizza. Ray's Pizza near Times Square is really my favorite, is really good. Um... Uh, although, of course, there are some really nice, like, uh, like uh, Italian-style pizza places in New York City as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I looked a lot into the lore for Fallout to, get, to do my spoiler review, and I really got interested in it and made me even more excited for uh, season two. Let's see. Hey, Lewis. Devin says, will X-Men 97 introduce new mutants in season two? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about what they're going to do there. I, don't, I, I like being surprised. Uh, let's do, Ricky likes medium rare best. Let's do a poll on how you like your steak. Just for fun. How do you like your steak? Well done. Medium. Medium rare and then rare. I guess steak, I, I would say steak and burgers, but people might have a different thing. By the way, anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. Oh yeah, Two Boots Pizza is pretty good, Wiki Nomad. I don't know how many of those that are left around. Wandering Seth, congrats on your diamond. Ooh, two years, baby. Ramon says, been rocking with you for so long, Grace. Uh, question, any details on the scary stories to tell in the dark sequel? 
I'm sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. I wish I had some tea for you. Deandra says, it's too bad that Warner Brothers doesn't have a U.S. theme park like Disney or Universal. I, mean, I agree, Deandra, although they, of course, partnered with Universal for Harry Potter, and I wish they would for DC as attractions as well. Blick says, hi, Grace, is an advanced film student from Argentina. That's awesome. Any tip on how to grow in the industry outside of my community for the next, uh, for the next years? Well, it's all about networking. Um, you know, I, I, are you talking about the film industry in Argentina? I think it's really important to network and to meet people and to go to events. I think that's really crucial. Hey, Nacho says, hi, Grace. There are rumors in Bat Twitter that Matt Reeves is using Element from his canned Batman Arkham show, mainly Harley. I don't know how many Harleys we can have. Was his Arkham show canned? I mean, I'm okay with that. I really want the next Batman movie to be good. So I think he should throw it all into the movie. Not the show. Rodrigo says, just saw Abigail in Brazil. Really want Melissa Barrera as the new Wonder Woman. You know, I'm actually, after having seen Abigail, I'm more into that. I thought she was really good in the movie. All right, let's see here. Oh, somebody just, thank you, Brad, for gifting 10 memberships. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. Vegetarians can't participate in this poll. Let's see. Luis is a chef and says he doesn't care how people order it. That's great. I'm just glad. That's a good positive attitude to have. I love it. Uh, AJ Jones says, hi, Grace. Do you know what, at what point they are going to add a Muppet Great Movie Ride to Hollywood Studios? I wish they would go back to that idea. I don't know. I wish they'd just fix the Muppet Ride. It's been there for too long. I went on that again last time I was there. and I, I could recite the whole Muppet 3D along with it. Let's see here. I don't care, Bear says, as a vegetarian, I prefer my steak still living. That's pretty funny, I don't care, Bear. That's a good t-shirt. Levi says, hey, Grace, we'll be listening to the new Taylor Swift album that's coming out tomorrow. Ah, oh, you're the best. I love your chant. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Levi. Oh, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out for sure. I mean, her last album, all the songs sounded the same to me. But I do like Taylor, so I'm hoping there's at least one song on there that I can, I can add to my list. Nick says, why does Mark Wahlberg still have a career? I don't know. I don't know why he didn't get canceled. Starry says, hi, have you caught up with the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver comic? No, I haven't. I really, it's been, I read too many bad issues, I'm afraid. Let's see, which is a shame because I really like, um, I like, I like the idea of it. Mr. Magic says, Grace, will there be live streams next week? There will be. Yeah, I'm not going to do, I'm sorry that I wouldn't have any live streams last week. I'm really going to make sure I stay on top of them. My partner, Brian, is leaving for a big trip to celebrate our 10th anniversary, hoping to get a shout out for him, but at the right time. I'll, I'll, well, let's hope you can catch me, Mr. Magic. You know, the, the live streams vary what time of day they are and what day, but let's hope, let's hope we can get it to go. Let's hope we can make it work. World of Devon says, Grace, what are your thoughts on Coogler casting Michael B. Jordan and Haley Steinfeld and Delroy Lindo uh, and Hunter B-15 from Loki and many more in his movie? I love Ryan Coogler. I can't wait to see what he's cooking up. My review says, Grace, it's Jack from Twitter. Oh, yay. Please do a poll on Young Justice. Quite frankly, it's amazing. It's, uh, um, uh, I don't know. I'll, maybe another day, Jack, we'll do a poll on Young Justice. It's not even airing any new episodes right now, right, though? But it's great to see you, Jack. I'm glad you're on here. Now I know what your account is. Art Lover sh says, should they update It's a Small World? Uh, they can, I like that in Disneyland, they have some Disney characters mixed in there, but I, I really like A Small World the way it is. Movies TV Review says, who would you cast as the Bride of Frankenstein? I'm not sure. I know at one point Gal Gadot wanted it, and I liked her for it until I saw her in World Wonder Woman 1984. I'm not sure. All right, let me close the poll. Hold on. On steak. What's it say? Let's see. Come on, poll. All right. Medium won with 36%, with medium rare right behind it at 32. 27% with well done. Oh, so they're all pretty close to each other. 36% medium, 32% medium rare, 27% well done, but only 3% rare. Yeah, rare is too rare, in my opinion. 
That's like not cooked often. Uh, let's see here. Ah, oh, Jerry, that's very sweet of you to wish um, Mr. Magic and uh, his partner a happy anniversary. Let's see here. Mish says, do you think Wanda and Pietro will show up in X-Men? Maybe at some point. I don't know if it'll be this season. But, I mean, I can't believe the season only has four episodes to go. I'm loving it so much. Charlie says, hi, Grace. At the beginning of interviews, you say, Grace Randolph, beyond the trailer. Why do you do that? I'll tell you. It's because they have to be able to know who, when they're clipping the footage, they have to know who to send it to. So that is, and I just like including it. Uh, Cause it's kind of like when the, the interviews already started at that point, And often there's a vibe that comes out of that. So that's why I keep it in the edit, but that's so that they know who to send the footage to when they're doing the edit at the end of the, at the end of the junket. Ah, oh, Mish, you got a gold badge. I love it. Blair says, would you like to see Lord of the Rings special edition uh, versions of uh, style versions of Dune? I love the world and would be hooked on a three to four hour cut of each film. Ah, uh, I don't know. I like Dune the way it is. And I think it's just perfectly paced. I wouldn't play around with it personally. Let's just make more Dune. And I did see Christian Bale as Frankenstein. He was, looks a lot like uh, uh, Jared Leto as the Joker, which I thought was interesting. AG says, as a New Yorker, are you annoyed with our weather this week? Oh, well, first off, that's very generous of you, AG. And yes, it was so nice and warm for a while, but now it's cold again. So I'm a little bummed about that. I'm going back, Lewis, to find your chat. Hold on. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a better fit for Frank Sinatra. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I don't think that he is personally, but uh, I appreciate uh, your enthusiasm there. Oh, I hurt my elbow. Ouch. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Ryan says that was a good question. I wonder what question it was that you liked. Mika said, what did you think of the trap trailer? I felt like I saw the whole movie. I mean, I'm loving Josh Hartnett coming back. Oh, thank you, Big Lee Chu. I'm loving Josh Hartnett getting a career revival. I thought he was one of my favorite things in Oppenheimer. Uh, but at the same, oh, the interview question. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad you liked that question. Um, but I thought that the, you know, M. Night's burned me so many times. I thought Knock at the Cabin was just an awful movie. Um, and I, I feel like, I don't know if I really want to watch a movie where, where a mass murderer is the lead who I'm asked to follow around. That's kind of dark for me. Uh, but I mean, I'll definitely review it because it looks like a hot movie, so... Film Fanatics says, any thoughts on the J.J. Abrams, Timothy Chalamet, Back to the Future homage movie? Well, that's a rumor from a scooper that J.J. Abrams might make a Back to the Future style movie and that Timothy Chalamet has been offered the lead. That's actually, I got to say, pretty good casting, and uh, I would be interested in it. Michael Char Charlie Michael says, Grace, how do you feel about the Muppets hosting the Oscars? Miss Piggy trying to one-up the Best Actress nominees. I don't know if they could do the whole night, but that's a solid bit, Charlie. I think it would be nice for them to show up a little bit, but I don't know if they should host the whole evening. And then Ben 10 says, what do you think about the Dungeons & Dragons directors for Spider-Man 4? I don't know. I would worry about their commercial ability because, you know, Dungeons & Dragons just didn't connect. Oh, hey, Angela. Hi to you and your brother. Uh, Lewis, I answered your chat. Uh, Angela says, hi, Grace. Do you think there will be a red band trailer for Deadpool? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't heard whether or not there will be. I, think they're ha I, I mean, I think they're handling it just right the way it is. All right, well, it's past 647. I stayed a little bit longer. Let me do a couple of shout outs. I am excited for uh, Knuckles' Senior Lullaby. In fact, I just got my screeners this morning. I got all six episodes. The review embargo actually lifts on Monday, but I might, I'm going to either review it on Monday or Tuesday. Sensation is munching on some Popeye's Parmesan chicken. That sounds delicious. Noah, you got a new puppy. Oh, adorable. Hey, Asensio and Fresno. I hope you have a great day too, Will. Well, Jeff Blue just finished work in Buffalo, New York, and Ryan Sanchez is having dinner with his, his own pooch in Texas. Aw, all the doggy love. Hey, Mr. Magic in Portland, my pleasure. 
Uh, ben says, animating with my cat. Oh, I'm glad your cat's being helpful. What did Noah do? Is Noah the one who got the dog? Adam's Fear says, does Deadpool even need another trailer? It'll have one more trailer, for sure. But I hope not too many trailers. Adam Byers is watching from Indianapolis and eating chicken Alfredo lasagna. I thought you said you were a vegetarian. But that sounds interesting. You have a great night, too. Aided Buffalo 32 is guzzling pulled pork and ginger beer. Mm, that sounds tasty. Uh, Film Fanatics is enjoying the stream after tennis practice. Oh, I love it. CM says, in Dallas, waiting for my salmon and veggies dinner. That's very healthy of you, CM. I'm impressed. Well, I Heart Movies just finished dinner in Ohio and is about to watch a movie. Aw. Let's see here. Oh, thank you, Art Lover. Yes, if you could like the video and subscribe, that would always be appreciated. Ben 10, once again, going to bed in France. I always get to wish you a bonne nuit. CJ, having dinner with your, with your dog, Marvel, in New York City. Hello, neighbor, indeed. Oh, Adam, you're not actually a vegetarian. You were joking. That's funny. Oh, thanks, Junior Jangles. I appreciate it. I'm waiting. I, have, I'm, I'm, I ran out of this hairspray that I use from uh, Serge Normand. I use um, the finishing spray, and it's been very effective. But I ran out, so I've been having to hold over for a few days. So I'm glad you think I'm, I'm doing okay. J. Scott Garibay is having a turkey sandwich in Philly. Sonny says, have a great evening, everybody. That's very sweet of you, Sonny. Timothy, joining so late from Georgetown, Guyana. Ah, oh, I love it. I love you guys from, your, from all over the world. It's so great to talk to you. I'm glad you made it, Timothy. I'm glad at least I got to say hi to you. Tracy says, can you give a huge shout out to my lovely friend, Roy Cooper, who is going through a tough time at the moment. My pleasure, Roy Cooper, or Cropper, Roy Cropper. Uh, Tracy, is that, is, that, is that Holly Jarvis? Did you create a new account? Because it's the same 4.99 pound. Mm. Taking advantage of my kindness. Oh, let's see here. Noah Carter is having breakfast for dinner. That's always fun. I love doing that. Uh, it is a, it is, uh, it is a joke. Let's see here. AJ Jones is about to pop some popcorn and watch Elemental with their kids. Oh, that sounds like a nice evening. Eddie Vamp is cutting veggies to make tacos for lunch. Oh, that's very healthy. I like that. Well, Lewis is also eating tacos, but from Hawaii. Ah, oh, I love it. Oh, and look, Randall is driving home from work in Miami Beach. What a cool, what, what a cool place to be. Ah, oh, thanks, Terry. Ah, uh, uh, Jack, that's very kind of you. Uh, and thanks, Timothy. I love the, I love the hands. David Q says, working from home today. Just, log, uh, just logged off and now doing laundry, so I don't have to do it over the weekend. Ah, uh, hear you on that one. Weekend plan, sleeping and watching streaming shows. Sounds like fun, David. World of Devon. Uh, I, I thought the Bad Boys 4 trailer just seemed a little bit like more of the same. I didn't think there was enough cool new stuff in it. And Dory does voice that says, walking to the park to stretch some people before, uh, to, oh, to sketch some people. I was like, stretch some people? To sketch some people before setting in for Din Din, a.k.a. dinner. I love it, Dory. And Ivan says, here in Mexico, I watched The Fall Guy yesterday, yesterday in a special screening, and it's really fun with a spectacular third act. Ah, oh, you're rubbing it in. I just got my press invite for the week of release. Ah, oh, everybody's going to see in this movie but me. Uh, and Elise says, hi to everyone outside of the USA. Ah, oh, that's so cute. Like Tomas, who's in Stockholm. Oh, you guys are great. I love talking to you so much. All right, I'll see you tomorrow at noon. The stream will be at noon for sure, 100,000%, because I must be done by one. All right, everybody, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.